Hi, my name is Dr. Lisa Amati, and I'm the State Paleontologist of New York. I'm a woman, but it isn't such a big deal these days for a woman to be in a leadership role. Today, I want to talk to you about a woman who held my position, but starting more than 80 years ago. Winifred Goldring was born in Kenwood, New York in 1888. She attended Wellesley College and graduated with a master's degree in 1912. She then pursued graduate work in geography, paleontology, and paleobotany at Harvard, Columbia, and Johns Hopkins universities. She started working as a scientific expert at the New York State Museum in 1914. In 1926, she was the paleobotanist, which is the study of fossil plants, and she became the state paleontologist in 1939. Winifred Goldring is well known not only because she was the first female state paleontologist, the state paleontologist of New York, and the first female president of the Paleontological Society, but also because her research was so careful and thorough. Today, most scientists specialize in a small area of their field. For example, I am an invertebrate paleontologist, but Goldring published on invertebrate paleontology, paleobotany, and straight geology, as well as publishing guides for the general public non-expert. For example, New York State Museum Handbook 14 is the guide to the geology of John Boyd Thatcher Park and vicinity. In this handbook, Goldring explains how the rocks in this popular park just south of Albany formed. Goldring also wrote the Handbook of Paleontology for Beginners and Amateurs in 1929. In this handbook, Goldring describes the many ways in which fossils can form, where and how to collect fossils, and explains how all the major groups of life forms lived. She also gives examples of fossil forms using clear illustrations using examples mainly from New York. Part 2 of the handbook, published in 1931, first describes how the different types of rocks form. Then, Goldring provides an overview of the geology and life from each time period, interprets the climate conditions at the time, and lists the fossils that can be found in sedimentary rocks preserved in New York. Goldring also did geologic mapping. This is a map of the Schoharie Quadrangle that Goldring used while studying rocks in the field. She located the areas where one type of rock was succeeded by a different type of rock, and drew the contact between them on the map, then she used different colors to denote the different rock types. The completed map was published in 1946. One of Goldring's most important works describes crinoid fossils from New York. In her New York State Museum Memoir 16, 97 crinoid species are described and 74 species were new to science. Here is a Melocrinus, an illustration of a new species of Clarkiocrinus, and illustrations of Maria Crinus. Goldring would eventually publish 19 papers on crinoids. The work that Goldring is most famous for is her research on plant fossils from the world-famous Gilboa Forest in Gilboa, New York. In the 1920s, hundreds of fossil tree stumps were discovered in this small New York town when they opened a rock quarry to mine material to build a dam. Goldring studied the tree stumps and other plant fossils from the area and published her work in four papers between 1924 and 1930. She then worked with sculptor Henri Marchand to incorporate actual specimens into a life-size reconstruction of the fossil forest for the New York State Museum, which at the time was located on Washington Avenue. The exhibit was in place from its completion in 1924 to 1976 when the museum moved to its current location. After her retirement in 1954, Goldring enjoyed crocheting, reading, and long walks in nature. Personally, my favorite thing about Goldring is the thoroughness and thus reliability of her work. Although new finds sometimes change old interpretations, Goldring made remarkable observations and analyses based on the evidence she had at the time.